All right everyone, welcome to the Ruby League History Channel. We hope you're all well. Tonight's video is going to be the worst NRL signings video. It's going to be year by year going from 1998 up to 2020. So I'm going to go year by year and tell you the worst signing of that year. Before I get into the video, if you have not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It greatly helps out this independent YouTuber. I'm currently at 417 subscribers I think, give or take. So thank you to everyone that supported me channel from the very beginning and hello to all my new subscribers. Getting into this video though, we're going to start with 1998 now and work our way through. So coming in in 1998, this is my personal opinion by the way, David Hall was the worst signing in 1998. He was bought by South Sydney from NOS. He made over 150 appearances for NOS between... I think 1989 up until 1997, he was part of that North side which nearly got to the grand final. He scored over 50 tries for North Sydney and when he went to South, he only made five appearances in that one year and scored no tries and then retired from Rugby League. In 1999, it goes to Paul Langbach. He was signed by Eastern Suburbs from West. He was getting towards the end of his career. I think he was really desperate to um, keep playing and you could clearly tell that he was past it. He only made three appearances that year. And then in July of that year, he quit rugby league. So he quit halfway through the year. In 2000, John Lomax. He was signed by Melbourne from, I think it was North Queensland. And before that, he was at Canberra where he was part of that premiership winning side. And he also played nearly, I think, 20 games for New Zealand. But he only played three matches for Melbourne in 2000 and he... That was it. He retired after that, so that was the end of John Lomax. 2001, Danny Mui. He was signed by North Queensland in 2001 from uh, one of the Super League clubs. Before that, he was a Premiership winning player with Manly. He also represented Queensland, and I think he also represented Australia. He only made two appearances for North Queensland in 2001, and he retired after that, and that was the end of Danny Mui. 2002, Adam Dykes. So Adam Dykes, he signed from uh, Cronulla. He went to he signed for Parramatta from Cronulla. He was due to replace um, some of the players that had left after the two thousand and one season. He would actually had a few good years at Cronulla, and a lot was expected of him at Parramatta, but he didn't deliver, and uh, he was a he was a flop of the signing basically for Parramatta in two thousand and two, two thousand and three. You've got Richard Sweem. He signed for Brisbane from New Zealand. Uh, sorry, from Melbourne. He had a very good reputation in Melbourne and he won a premiership with them. But when he went to Brisbane, um, he wasn't very good up there. I know a lot of Brisbane fans that don't really rate Richard Swain's time at Brisbane to be very good. So he gets a mention. And also, I thought I'd throw in Chris Walker as well. Chris Walker, he signed from Brisbane. Um, he, went, he signed for South from Brisbane. And he only made, I think, about five or six appearances for the club. And then he ended up walking halfway out through his contract. And then he signed with Eastern Suburbs, which caused all sorts of bother. He got um, death threats. He got some threatened um, um, letters in the mail and all that caper. So Chris Walker gets a mention there, like. 2004, Sheen Musprat. He signed for Parramatta from North Queensland. He was due to be one of the, the major signings. And he was supposed to be the starting hooker. But he only made six appearances and scored one try. I thought I'd also throw in Chris Starman. He was highly rated over here in England. He went and signed with Parramatta in the NRL. He only lasted a year. He was supposed to be like a long-term solution for the halfback rule. It didn't even pan out that way. He ended up, I think, finishing the year as hooker. And then he promptly left the country. 2005, Shannon Egerty. He signed for South Sydney. He was originally um, playing with... Eastern Suburbs, he'd won a premiership with them. South Sydney thought that they were getting the Queensland State of Origin star and a premiership winner. And they didn't really get that. And he, he wasn't very good at South in the time that he was there, especially in his first year. And then he ended up getting shot to uh, North Queensland. 2006, Ryan Oware. He signed for West Tigers from Canberra. He was also another State of Origin player. West Tigers thought they were getting the seed of origin front row. They thought they were going to get a front row that was going to bolster the pack. And they got anything but that. 2007, Josh Haney. 
He was a Queensland State of Origin player. He was part of that winning series in 2006. He also played for North Queensland. He was part of that 2005 Grand Final side. He played for Cronulla. He only played three matches for Cronulla. Ricky Stewart wasn't really a fan of him. He got shot to when um, he ended up playing a grade rugby league in the Sutherland Shire. He was playing for the guy Mia Gorillas or something like that. And um, he, he, so he just wasn't demoted to reserve grade. He was demoted to like park football. So that, that's pretty much unheard of these days. But he, he was a really bad signing for Cronulla. 2008. Uh, once again, this is another Cronulla signing. Carl Felige, he was supposed to be the next Sonny Bill Williams. Um, there was a lot of clubs after him. Cronulla got his signing. I think they paid about 700,000 quid for him or something like that. He only played one match and he lasted 11 minutes. And then he in, ended up um, leaving the club. And then he's been playing country rugby league for, I think, the last 10 years. But I think they were seeing that something like his... Uh, 11 minutes on the pitch cost Cronulla about 20,000 quid every minute that he was on the pitch. 2009, I'm, I'm really sorry Cronulla fans, but I'm going to have to pick on you again. 2009, Rennie Matui. He was sacked from Canterbury in 2008. Cronulla signed in 2009. He played eight matches for Cronulla. All of them were losses. And then he was banned from the spot for two years for tests and positive to a banned substance. So a very bad signing by Cronulla. To, to, uh, 2010, Jason Keelis, he gets me um, nod for 2010. He was signed by the West Tigers. He thought that they were getting a premiership winning player. He'd done well in England. Before that, he was with Eastern Suburbs in, in the NRL. And he only played three matches. He ended up retiring after that. Justin Poor as well, he gets an honourable mention. He was part of that Wien Bennett St George side. In 2009, that won the minor premiership. He'd also played State of Origin. But when he went to Parramatta, he was a flop. So we get to mention. 2011, Matt Orphan, he went to Canberra. He left England and went and signed with Canberra. Canberra thought that they were getting a Dally M winner, a premiership winner with Manly. And he only played six games, which were quite underwhelming. And then um, by the end of 2012, he was they got shot of him at the end of 2012. Uh, Chris Sandow in 2012, he was, in my opinion, the worst signing. He was signed on big money from South. I bet your South is still probably laughing at that, laughing at it to this day. Like, um, I think he was on about 500,000 a year, maybe more. In his first year at Parramatta, and even in his second year, finished with the wooden spoon. He, he was uh, criticised for his weight and, and his playing style at times. And also another honourable mention would go to Adam Blair. He signed for West Tigers. He was a flop at West Tigers, especially in his first year. 2013, I'm going to give it to Dean Nielsen. He was a premiership winner with Melbourne, a legitimate premiership winner with Melbourne. So that's a bit of a, a shock. <laughs> but he um, he had a very underwhelming time at New Zealand. And uh, he didn't have a very good first season with them. And another honourable mention for 2013 would go to Breith and Asti. I think Breith and Asti, he was desperate to get the 300 games. He wanted to be a 300 game player. He was way past it. West Tigers were daft enough to sign him. He signed with West Tigers and he was a bit of a flop for West Tigers. 2014, Ben Barber. Brisbane signed Ben Barber from Canterbury. They thought that they were getting a, a Dally M winner, a grand final runner up player, someone that could probably hold down the full-back position at Brisbane for many years to come and they got anything but that. 2015, Anthony Watmore for Parramatta. He signed on big money for Manly, considering that um, he had problems with his knees and he, he was pretty much a, a broken a broken player by the end of his career. If you if you listen to his podcast, he, he, he says himself that he was pretty much broken and Parramatta were daft enough to pay that amount of money to sign him. He had a very underwhelming time at Parramatta, especially his first year, he wasn't that great. 2016, Kieran Farman, um, he was signed on big money from uh, Manly, he went to Parramatta. A lot was expected of Kieran Farman, he was made the captain. And then after, I think only about seven or eight games, he did his shoulder. And then he said that he had mental health issues and that he was he wanted to quit rugby league. And um, We ended up having to get rid of him. And then 
mysteriously, as soon as he leaves Parramatta, he's mental health cured, and he's uh, he ended up playing for New Zealand, Canterbury, and now he's at Manly. But that whole fiasco with Kieran Farren was just a dud signing, and it's something that um, makes me want to drink a lot to try to forget about it. Uh, 2017, Paul Carter, he signed for uh, the Sydney Roosters. He only played three matches. Now, I don't know, there's something about this list that players that are not that good, they, they, they only play three games and then they leave. But he, he played three games for the Sydney Roosters. Um, not only was his performances on the field not good, but off the field there was a lot of shite going on. He brought a lot of negative attention to the club and they quickly got rid of him, I think, the next year. 2018, um, I'm going to give it to Bryce Cartwright. He was a, a big sign for the Gold Coast in, in 2018. A lot was expected of him because he was kind of going a bit shy at Penrith and people thought that maybe going to the Gold Coast would change things, but they, they didn't. So he was a flop of a signing. Honourable mention goes to Aaron Woods. He signed for Canterbury in 2018. He was signed on big money. He was one of those players from West Tigers that were part of the big far fiasco. He only played, I think, about five or six matches for Canterbury and then he ended up leaving halfway through the year and then going to Cronulla. So the whole thing was very messy there in 2018. 2019, um, I'm going to give it to Corey Norman. Corey Norman signed on big, big money from Parramatta. I, I don't understand why St George played, paid that amount of money when considering what he did at Parramatta. But... He was very underwhelming. And then also, I know this is a bit harsh, but I thought I'd throw in Ben Barber as well. He technically didn't play a game for North Queens in 2019, but he was billed as a big signing. You know, this is this is this is a really good sign, especially after how he played here with St. Ellen's, Man of Steel, all that keeper. And I, I just think that that whole incident with his partner and all that, it brought a lot of negative attention to the game. And also brought a lot of negative attention to North Queensland as well. And this year, 2020, I'm going to give it to Brodie Croft. Um, he was signed with a lot of expectation from Melbourne. Obviously, when lots of players sign from Melbourne, there's that expectation that they're going to hit the ground running and they're going to be good wherever they go. But Brodie Croft, he was a shadow of the player that he was at Melbourne. And uh, frankly, he was shocking with Brisbane this year. And I'm pretty sure... Most Brisbane fans will agree. So anyway, that's me. Um, <laughs> I think I need to take a breath after that. Um, that's me list for the way signed year by year for the NRL. I hope I did it quick enough. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like. If you are enjoying the channel but you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. Click that subscribe button and make sure that you comment and share on the video. All right, everyone. I'm going to get out of here. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Alright, ciao.